the next decision I think you have to make on this journey is one in yielding to God's complete word. Here's where if I was a, a, a real Bible teacher, pastor, I would have a big old black Bible and I'd put it up there. Now it's all little phones that have Bibles on them and everything. But no, are you going to trust God's complete word or are you going to Jeffersonize the Bible? Do you know what I mean by that? You guys know what Jefferson did to the Bible? He liked certain things in there and the other things he didn't like, he actually cut them out. We may not be as much as Jefferson, but we cut out. We choose not to look at certain things. Because there's times when they, they contradict and they, it would mean a change in the way that we do things. It would mean a change in the way that we deal with people. It would maybe mean a change in the way that we spend our money. It may mean a way that we are against the things of society. That we're not in agreement with the way things are going in society. And that, that may, there may be some costs that come to that. We don't know it that much in this country yet. Yet. You are, if you become a Christian in China and you're in, in the underground church, you know it. You know that there's a cost to, to, to trusting the complete Word of God. But here, we don't get that too much. Because in this country, and really within the West, there's this miasma. Do you guys know what a miasma is? I, I learned this word a long time ago and I love using it. Because it's a stench. It's a, it's, it's a fog that we're in. And what is the, the overall philosophical belief it, that we have in this country that we don't even realize that we're in this fog and it's called postmodern humanism. It's in the culture in this world today and guess what guys, it has crept into the church. It's in all of the churches, this postmodern humanism. It's no standard of truth, this is what it basically means, there's no standard of truth and the happiness of man is the most important thing. Therefore, if something makes someone happy, then what does it hurt? If it's true for a person, then it's a truth. And we are not to judge that. So if, if you tell me something's true for you, well, then that's true for you. But that doesn't mean that it's true for me. And we all become our conveyors and purveyors of our own truth. Instead of there being a standard of truth. And if we ever were to judge what somebody else is doing, well, that, that upsets the tenets of this postmodern humanism, this philosophical fog that we find ourselves in, the, this philosophical position of postmodern humanism, if we ever say, no, I don't think that that is true. Well, who are you to judge? Because judgment is, is, is an unfair thing. You never were to judge anybody else. And that's why, how dare you be the judge? And that's where we find ourselves in. When you say, no, there actually is a standard of truth, we're coming more and more to that in today's culture. We're coming more and more to that in today's churches, unfortunately. Where, okay, that's true for you and this is true for me. We're not looking to what the true standard of truth is. We live in a society where each man does what is right in his own eyes. And we will suffer the consequences for that insane thinking. We don't even need God's judgment to fire down. We'll, 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 we'll suffer the consequences of that on our own. In fact, God's mercy would withhold some of the consequences, I think, that we're going to end up suffering. If we sow to the flesh, we will reap to the flesh. Let me give you an example. Now, you guys that know me pretty well know that I'm not political. I'm not a Republican. I'm not a Democrat. Uh, I want all of them thrown into the ocean, and that's okay with me. So... Don't come across as this, but I'm going to use an example to explain postmodern humanism with our president. So in 2008, the president, and I'm just going to use his own quotes in here, so that way there's no bent on it from me. The president said, I believe marriage is between a man and a woman. I'm not in favor of gay marriage. Again, the standard of truth, even in that statement, is his belief. And I'm not overly concerned with what you believe, but why you believe it and how you came to that conclusion. But let's just take him at his word. This was his belief then. And then in August of 2008, remember that they did the uh, Rick Warren thing where he was moderating the, the debate between there? And he said, uh, I believe that marriage is the union between a man and a woman. Now for me as a Christian, it is also a sacred union God's in the mix. This is, this is Obama's own words here. So then in May 9th, 2012, he was being interviewed on, I think it was ABC, and they asked him the question again. And he said, well, my beliefs have begun to evolve. Okay. So they were asked, the, the TV interviewer asked him if he still opposed gay marriage. And this is a quote. 
I have to tell you that over the course of several years, as I talk to friends, family, and neighbors, when I think about members of my own staff who are incredibly committed, remember, what are we living in the miasma of postmodern humanism, right? Where the happiness of man is the main priority. So let me go back and just kind of read, as you hear this statement, you, you see it all over it. The happiness of man and truth is something that is changeable and that if it's true for one person, it can be true for them and not true for another person, instead in truth being objectively true. I, again, I'll read the quote. I have to tell you over the course of several years, as I talk to friends, family, and neighbors, when I think about members of my own staff who are incredibly committed in monogamous relationships, same-sex relationships, who are raising kids together, when I think about those soldiers or airmen or marines or sailors who are out there fighting on my behalf and yet feel constrained even now that don't ask, don't tell is gone because they're not able to commit themselves in marriage. So the standard of truth became, well, what is going to bring the most happiness to man? Again, I'm just going to take him at his word without anything underlying and, and I don't know his heart. I'm just taking what his word is and you can see the philosophical humanism over this. He says, at a certain point, I've just concluded that for me personally, when you see that, that's kind of the red flag to say, oh, he's going to say what's true for him. For me personally, it's important for me to go ahead and affirm that I think same-sex couples should be able to get married. Okay, never went back to what the standard of truth is. This is his personal beliefs that have evolved. And that's okay. People's beliefs evolve. But what happens is when they devolve away from the standard, from the truth of God, you devolve into doing what is right in your own eyes. And when you live in a culture where the happiness of man is the main thing that, that is the highest priority, then anything is going to go for the happiness of man. On uh, Friday when the ruling came down, the president tweeted, Today is a big step in our march toward equality. When I read that, I thought of the Tower of Babel. Uh, today is a big step in our march towards equality. This is a victory for America. Do you see that the standard of truth is not about what God thinks, but it's based on the happiness and the equality of man? If it makes a man happy, then he should do it. Because to judge or to reign on somebody else's right to happiness by, in, by imposing your antiqu antiquated beliefs from an antiquated book, well, that's, that's, that's tyranny. So that's what's happening. That's the philosophical shift that's been here for a long time. But now a lot of this is starting to take root. And what happens is you'll start to see the steam of this take up even more force. Because the overarching principle is philosophical humanism. In, in the book of Timothy, I think, the Bible, uh, Paul talks about the church. He calls the, the church the pillar and standard of truth. And when the church stops being the church, society starts moving towards the happiness of man, starts always moving towards what's right in their own eyes because they're unhinged, unhinged from what is truly true. Our rest is a weapon against the oppression of man's obsession to control things. Look at the long line of make-believe kings, and the Lord of the Flies wants you to kiss his.